angle of velocity. Use rectangles to estimate how far the car traveled during 36 during the 36 seconds it took to reach 142. So did it tell me left, right, or average? It didn't say. Did it? Are they equal distance away each time? Yeah. So what's my width on this? The width of each rectangle, if I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 rectangles, what's my width? Y'all can do this. Point zero zero one. Did you convert it over to seconds? Is that what y'all did? I don't know. Talk me through it. Tell me what you did. You didn't know how to start? Yeah, sorry, no. Okay. Is point zero one thirty six seconds point zero one of an hour? Is that thirty six seconds? Point zero one of an hour well but if you look so that very last point is point zero one one forty two this is in hours this is miles per hour how many seconds is this oh you gotta do so point zero one times sixty times sixty thirty six that's right okay all right. Oh, the dirt said to reach 142, so we know. Okay, so what I would do on this is I would say the width is constant each time, right? So every rectangle would be 0 0.001 seconds wide or hours wide. So for the area, and I think I'll do, what should we do? I'll do right ram since the first one's zero. Um, 0 0.001, that's my width. Times now, am I going to use the first point or the last point if I'm doing right ram? The last one, right? So I skip the first one and I'll go 40 plus 62 plus 82 plus 96 plus 108 plus 116 plus 125 plus 132 plus 137 plus 142. And what do you get? Maybe we should have used our gram times point zero zero one. Okay, so this one gives me one point zero four miles, right? Because I'm area under, so I'm the antiderivative of this, so backwards. So if this is the derivative, it's a rate, it's miles per hour, then the backwards of that would be miles, right? Um, it looks like they must have done left ram. They average the two? Okay, okay. So if I do left ram, same thing, I'm going to do all of these except not 142. Zero plus all of these. So I'm not going to do the 142, and I'm going to times by 0 0.001. And I get 0.898, and then we average the two together, 1.04 divided by 2. 0.969 miles. Is that what I got? Whew. Does that make sense? You'll see what we did. Average left and right together. They're almost always going to tell you. Which one to do? I'm surprised they didn't hear. They must have told you. Did they say it like in one of the problems in the beginning to always average these? I don't know. I would say either one of those would be fine if it didn't tell you. But I've never seen it where they don't tell you which one to use.
If it doesn't tell you, whichever one you want, I suppose. I've never seen them not tell you on an exam or anything like that. They always say, using MRAM or using LRAM or whatever it is. Most time it's MRAM, but you can't really do MRAM on a table like this. So that's why they averaged it, I guess. Um, and then roughly how many seconds did it take the car to reach the halfway point? And about how fast was the car going then? So here's where you have to stop and really think about it. So the halfway point happens where? Well, oh, what's the total distance traveled? We just did that. That's the speed, but this is the total distance traveled, right? So the halfway point would be, divide this by two. So I'm looking for, when did I travel 0. 0.4845 miles? That's the question. When does that happen? Well, I would start doing individual rectangles until I got close to that value. So I would probably start with, remember your width is 0 0.001, right? And we'll do, we'll do left since it's easier. Um, times zero is of course zero. So then to that, all right, this is rectangle one. I'm gonna add 0 0.001 times 40. which is 0 0.04. So now together, I'm at 0 0.04. That's not this. I'm looking to get to that point, right? So after, what is that, 0 0.001 seconds, I am at 0 0.04 miles. I want to know when do I hit almost a half a mile. So now let's do the next one. The width is still 0 0.01, but now I'm going 62 miles an hour. I don't know why I'm using a calculator for that. I'm an idiot. And then whenever I add it to the preceding, now I've traveled a total of 0 0.102. Still not at a half a mile. You see what I'm doing here? So this is saying this is 0 hours. This is 0 0.001 hours. This is 0 0.002 hours. So maybe after 0 0.003 hours, I will have traveled that far. Well, I need to do times 82 and add it to my, this total. So now I've traveled 0.184, still not a half a mile. See what we're doing here? Do y'all understand? So now let's check 0 0.004 hours. So again with this, this time it's 96, 0 0.096. Add here, what do you get? 960 18.280. Still not half a mile. I'm going to keep going. Um, what's up? 108. So now I'm at 0.388. Nope. 0.006. One one six would be ten. I'm getting really close. I'm gonna say it's probably somewhere between here and the next one. Is that what y'all got? Or is that what you think? Did I have wrong? Oh yeah, because I didn't carry my one. There you go. So that's right. There you go. So this one. So I would say that that's a good estimate because that's what they said is just estimate when you get there. So I would say after 0 .006 hours or how many seconds is that? 21.6 seconds. How fast was the car going at that point? So look back at 0 .006, how fast was it going? 116 miles per hour. Does that make sense?
Do y'all see what we did? Each point is giving you another place of how far the car's gone at that time. I wish I could do something to liven that up because y'all look like you're terribly bored. Okay, what else on your homework? 29 and 28. Oh, please, Lord, let these be ones y'all can do because I didn't read through them a lot. All right, 28, an object is dropped straight down from a helicopter. The object falls faster and faster, but its acceleration or rate of change of its velocity decreases. Ooh, rate of change of velocity, which means what? Acceleration, exactly. Oh, it says that, Shane. The acceleration is measured in feet per square second and recorded every second after the drop for five seconds as shown in the table. Use left ram to find an upper estimate for the speed speed when t is 5. Okay. So we got a table. Speed is what? How does speed relate to acceleration and velocity? Absolute value of velocity. 32, 19.4111.77, 7.14. Y'all okay? Are y'all sad? Maybe, maybe you're sad. I don't even believe you. Come here. I don't believe anything you say anymore. Start questioning. Um, find an upper estimate for speed when t is five. Okay, so really, I just wanted you to find left ram and right ram here. Upper estimate and lower estimate has to do with, remember we talked about how some of them will be an overestimate depending on the concavity of the curve, and some of them will be an underestimate. That's kind of what we're getting to here, but really just find the left ram and the right ram. So a left ram here um, of five, so from zero to five. Looks like I'm gonna use five intervals right so the width is the same each time it's the time it's just one and then I'm going to multiply since it's left I'm going to do 32 plus 19.41 plus a lot I can't even read my own writing 11 11.77 what do you get 74.65. What would my units be here? Feet per second. So my table's in feet per second squared, right? And I'm going backwards on that. So I'd just be feet per second. Um, and then right ram with five units or five intervals. Again, one, I'm going to leave that 32 off, though, and I'm going to start at 19.41. And I'm going to add all the way up until 2.63. And you should get, I got 45.28. Is that what y'all got? Upper estimate, lower estimate. And then it says use upper estimates for the speed during the first second, 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 and third second to find an upper estimate for the distance fallen when t equals 3. So if we're using upper estimates, the upper estimates it told me were left ram. So I'm going to do left ram. Essentially what they're asking me for is left ram. First, second, and third second when falling 3. So 3 intervals instead, up to 3 seconds. Right? My unit still 1. My width is still 1. Left, I'm going to start with zero, and I'm just going to go up to, actually, it's not zero, sorry. It's 32. Plus 19.41, plus, that makes one, two, three. Oh. 32. You all see why I hung up a second? It doesn't really tell me though. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, oh, the der. It's asking me for distance traveled. This is not a graph. This is not a table of velocity. What's it a table of? Acceleration. So if it says to use the upper, so I'm going to use the left ram here, but if I was going at one second, it says for first second and third second. So at one second, what was my speed? One second, at one second. So at one second, I was going, that's left ram, right, from zero to one. So my width is one times, and I'm using the left, so times 32. So my speed was 32, what's my unit, feet per second? Feet per second. So how many feet did I travel in the first second? 32 feet. Bless you. Well, then at two seconds, what was my speed at two seconds? Well, at two seconds, my speed left ram at two was width is still one. Now I'm doing 32 plus 19.41. What was my speed at two seconds? 51.41 feet per second. So if I assume I drove that far for another second, right, are y'all following me? You drove 32 feet per second for the first second, and then you speed up to 51.41 second feet per second, right? That's up right. And then, so how many feet did you travel during that second? The second second. 51.41 feet. Right? Are y'all following what I'm doing? Are you sure? Right. Well, it's a, this is, okay, so when I find the RAM, I'm finding the velocity. Because the table is an acceleration. So, right, which is speed. Absolute value of velocity is speed. So then I'm saying, okay, so if I went this speed for one second, that means I traveled this many feet in that one second. And then at three seconds, again, left ram. So left ram at three would be 32 plus 19.41 plus 11.77. It's almost kind of hard. 63.18. Feet per second, which means that second I traveled 63.18 feet in total. Which means if I use the upper bound, the upper Hello. estimate, <laughs> then I should just be able to add all those together. I just need to know what size t shirt you need. Put the patch in. I don't think she can do it. Okay. I'm not telling her that yet. We'll wait. She'll probably come up here. Okay. So now let's add all three of those. Are you telling the story? You're saying 100 percent I'm just picking. I'm just picking. Okay. Let's add all these together. 32 plus 51.41 plus 63.18. 
146.59. Somebody please, I don't even want to look. Is that what they got? Is it? Hey, us. 146.59. Yeah. It would be times two, right. This this is your delta x or your difference, your width of your rectangle. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. Yep. Other questions about that one. Does that make sense? Y'all see what we did? It all gets a little convoluted on that. And then you said twenty-nine. Distance traveled by a projectile. An object is shot straight upward from sea level with initial velocity of 400 feet per second. Per second. Assuming gravity is the only force acting on the object, give an upper estimate for its velocity after five seconds have elapsed. Use G equals, did I give y'all this one? Are y'all sure? 29. Well, since V says use right RAM for a lower, then I'm going to assume L RAM is going to give us the upper estimate. Give an upper estimate for its velocity, five seconds. Ugh. Mm hmm every second. Wow, that's a lot of work, but you're right. That'd be the only way, unless you could, yeah, because y'all haven't learned. Okay, well, let's do that. Good job, Taylor. Time versus velocity. And we know at time zero, I'm at 400 on velocity, right? And it says that every second I'm decreasing 32 feet per second. So at one second, if I decrease 32, then where am I at? So that says that's, that's the rate of a rate. So since velocity is already a rate, it's saying 32 feet per second every second. So, yeah. Did you use like a physics equation? What'd you use? What kind of equation did you use? Okay, so if you use an equation, I would do 400 minus, right? And then, and then you would say estimate an upper. You'd still end up having to do it like a T chart. So you could do, you know what I'm saying? So you could do your rectangles. Oh, you could do it on the calculator. You're right. You're right. Or you could also graph it and find the area under because it'd be a shape, right? It's just a line. I start at 400. And I go down, down 32 over 1. It's just going to be a line like this. So until I get to 3, is that what it said? 3 or 5? Five? 5. If I plug in 5, I get 400 minus 32 times 5. 240 would be 5, 240. I need this area. Um, what did it say? Oh, yeah, it, well, for part A, it is, because for part A, it just asked you for velocity after five seconds. 
So for part A, yes, 240 would be your answer. For part B, though, did, what'd you get? When you did the RAM of this equation and you ran the program, oh, then that's right. That's what you'll get. 400. I was fixing to do it by hand. But yeah, if you got your calculator. Number of intervals, would you do five from zero to five? Yeah, right RAM would give you 1520 with n equals five. Good job, y'all. You made it easier than what I was fixing to do. But any of those would work. Any of that would work. Y'all good? Y'all need a break? Henry, you need a break? Yeah. Okay. But before we do, do y'all remember this? No, y'all don't remember that. Let's see. If I had something like What does that mean? You might, we may not have ever gotten to this. Like, you might not have seen it before. Have y'all not seen it? All right, so this is a sigma. Have you seen it, person? You probably have. This is a sigma, and what it does, sigma tells us to sum a set of numbers. It goes with sequences and series and things like that, but <laughs> sigma tells us to sum, and it says that if this is your equation, you plug in all the values of n, starting at 1, ending at 5, and you add together. So this would be like, I'd plug in 1, get 1 squared, and to that I would add 2 squared, and 3 squared, and 4 squared, and I keep going until I get to 5. So, I don't know what that little dot is there. This would actually equal what, whatever that sums up to be. I don't know what that sums up to be. But it just tells us to sum a set of numbers. Does that make sense to you? So if I had something like, and I, your equations can get very, very complicated. Um, five. Try to find a harder one. I mean, it's really not a hard concept. I'm trying to think of a harder one. But still, we're plugging 1 in for k, and then we're going from 1 to 4, and we're adding them all together. So this would be 100 times 1 plus 1 squared plus 100 times 1 plus oh, 2 plus 1 squared plus, and I'd keep doing that until this got to be 4. Yeah, sorry, 3 plus 1 squared plus 100 times Do you see how this might be useful in what we're doing and what we've been doing with the rectangles lately? I hope so. That tells you where to stop. So this is where this is your start. This is your stop. So let's look at an easy example and how we might write um, our right RAM in summation notation. This is kind of like the definition of a derivative where we did with the limits is h approaches infinity. Same kind of thing. This is the literal definition of an integral, but we won't spend a whole, whole lot of time on it like we did in the derivative. Let's say I have f of x equals e to the x, and I want to know... I want to evaluate the area under the curve from 1 to 3 when n equals 4, and I want you to use right RAM. 
No calculator. Let's do it by hand and see what happens here. So first of all, I need to figure out what? First thing I need to do, if I'm doing RAM, the width. That's exactly right. If I've got four equal sub intervals from one to three, how am I going to figure out the width there? I'm going to do how much space is between, right? That's three minus one. Then I'm going to divide it by how many sub intervals I want. Except instead of width, I'm going to call this now delta x. That's the change in x. The change in x is constant each and every time, right? So 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Does it make sense why I'm calling it delta x? That's what x is changing as I go across. And it's the same every time. So delta x for this one is going to be 1 half. And now if I want to find the area using right RAM, right? I can write it. Right RAM. I'm going to do delta X, right? So one half times, and tell me how I find those endpoints, those heights. You plug it in, right? What am I plugging in? Well, I'm starting at 1, right? But I'm doing right RAM. So the first one I need to do 1 plus a half, which would be 3 over 2. Do you agree? Are y'all following me? All right, so I start at 1, right? Think about this on a graph. I start at 1, but I'm going every half. So I'm going 1 to 3, 1, 2, so I'm just in between these two values, but I'm doing right RAM. So if I cut it each one in half, here are my intervals, right? There's one, two, three, four. Well, where are these happening? That's obviously one. And then I go a half over, so I'm at three over two. And then another half would put me where? at 2, and then another half, 5 over 2, and then another half, y'all tracking with me? So I'm plugging in here for the first one, remember since it's right RAM, I'm going to skip this first one and I'm going to go to the three halves, and that's just my x. So to find the height of the rectangle, I need to do what with that? Plug it in. So it's going to be e to the 3 over 2. Plus, what's the next height? E to the 2 plus E to the 5 over 2 plus E cubed. That's my delta X. That's my change in X, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's say I first defined, because I did, f of x is equal to dx. I can write this in summation notation by saying, if f of x is e to the x, then this area, and again, this is a right RAM area here for this one, I can do the sum from 1 to 4, because I want 4 subintervals, of... Okay, now I've got f of x sub i. What does that mean? x sub i, that's each of my sub intervals here. Okay, so x sub 1, this would be x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub 4. So I still have to know what it is that I'm plugging in and what I'm doing, but this is just to write it in summation notation. And then each one needs to be multiplied by a delta x. And so this ends up being our general form 
of area under the curve or integral. I go from 1 to some value in. This is my number of intervals. And then I have f of x sub i. Okay, so it, depending on what, however many I've got and what I've got going on there. And then I multiply that by delta x. Now, oh, I'm trying to think how deep I want to go into this. I think I'm going to stop and just show you what it looks like and, and how you'll apply this before I actually show you the definite integral. What this might look like, and this is coming straight from your homework. This is number four. I was just, I'm just trying to set you up for, in general, let me show you a, a little bit more. No, 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 right, right. Um, of course, the, the actual area here, and here's where we're going to pull limits back into. The actual area, because we're talking about RAM, but if I want to talk about actual area, then I take this and I make it, I make that n go to infinity. Remember, n is my number of intervals, and the more intervals I get, the closer I get to the actual area, right? So if I could do an infinite number of, of intervals or rectangles, I'd have the actual area. So instead of using left RAM or right RAM using um, sigma notation, I can do the limit as I go to infinity and find the actual area. Now, I say all that. This is my least favorite part of integrals, and I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is number four. We have, it says, um, express the limit as a definite integral. So I have the limit as n approaches infinity. So I'm looking for area, but it doesn't matter because right now, oh, I haven't showed you how to. Well, let's just find the f of x first. Uh, k equals 1. 2n of 1 over 1 minus c sub k. Using some c's instead of x's, some k's instead of i's, but it's all the same. What would the... Oh, I forgot my delta x. What do you think the equation is here? In other words, what could my f of x be here that's plugged in up here? f of x be 1 over 1 minus x. That's really all I need you to know with these. Spotting that equation. Delta x is soon going to be replaced by dx in our integral. They're the same thing. It's just changing x. That's all that is. Okay. So now let me tell you, let me show you how we use this, and we actually write the definite integral. So here's what definite integral is. I say all that to get to this. I'm sorry. This is like a really stretched out S. It's called an accumulator function. It's a definite integral. It's called a definite integral because we put bounds on it. So for the one, the E that I was doing over here, I went from what to what? One to three. This is your lower bound comes on the bottom, so that makes sense. So I'll just write lower bound. For the example that I did with the E, that would be, the one would be down here. This is your upper bound. So one to three, so it would sit looking something like that. You put your F of X inside. So in the case of the E to the X, that would be E to the X here. And then we follow with a dx, and dx, um, this is your delta x that we were talking about in summation notation. So this would just be your dx. And that would tell me, this is simply the area under the curve, area under the curve. If I could get infinite, an infinite number of rectangles under the curve, this is the area that I would get, this is the value that I would get, and this is how I indicate it.
Does that make sense? A little bit? No, not yet. DX represents your delta X because it's like the width of each rectangle. But what you're you're just gonna follow, that's gonna be in there. Remember when we were taking derivatives? If you think about this as being the backwards of a derivative, do what? Well, because the actual definition is doing the limit as it approaches. It's kind of like the limit as h approached zero on our, it, you can't actually get there, but then we'll talk about ways that we can it'll find. Always it'll always be dx in there. No, no, it'll be dx. You won't use rectangles again unless it says approximate using RAM. Now we'll get exact values. So let's talk about how we use this. I'm jumping back to your homework again. We're going to start easy. Number 15 asks us to find, evaluate the integral, negative 2 to 1 of 5 dx. So let's talk about what this exactly means. I hope that we're going to go in this section. If we actually find any properties. My f of x is 5, right? That's my equation. So what this is saying, what does 5 look like when I graph it? Horizontal line. Here's 5, horizontal line. It's saying, tell me the area under the curve down to the x-axis from negative 2 to 1. This is what I'm looking for. What's in green is the integral from negative 2 to 1 of 5 dx. Well, you can find that area. How do you find that? You don't even need rectangles to do that. It's already a rectangle. You can find the exact area. What is it? One, two, three. What's the area? don't understand all the background stuff just yet it's okay because it'll come as we keep moving forward with the easy integrals that'll we'll come back to that and it'll make more sense as we come back to it. let's look at another one let's look at this is 21 the integral from negative 2 to 4 of x over 2 plus 3 x I've got a function here. What's the function? x over 2 plus 3. That's a linear function. That's easy, right? I'm finding the area under that line from negative 2 to 4. So I'm going to have to graph it. I would probably... There's the line. Agreed? But I'm going from negative 2 to 4. This is the area that I'm looking for. What's that shape? It's a triangle and a rectangle, also known as a trapezoid. Did you say that? I'm sorry. It is. That's okay. <laughs> Area of a trapezoid, one half base one plus base two times height. And this one's twisted on its side, so think about it flipped over. This is base one. It doesn't matter which one you let base one and base two, and then height runs across here. If you want to flip it, I think before we were cutting it in a triangle and a rectangle, that's fine if you'd rather do that. We will learn the trapezoid rule. We'll mostly use our calculator for it, but let me know when you get the area. Let's see if we get the same thing. What's, what's um, base one is easy, right, because we went down one, two.
Does that make sense? Is it pretty easy? So far? That's the answer. Try this one. Without a calculator, see what happens. I get it. You got to remember what absolute value looks like. What's absolute value look like? It's the V, right? It's this right on the origin, but this one's been reflected and shifted up to. So now my vertex is at two, and it's reflected. So it's just a line with a slope of one on both sides. So here's what I look like, and I'm going from negative 1 to 1. It's like a house. There's the area I'm looking for. <clears throat> How do you find that area? You divide it into this area, two times one is two. This area, one half. The height is one. The base is two. So that area is one. So what's your total area here? Tell me what you think. <laughs> it is kind of the same thing. It's the same. Yeah. I would rather do this than the rectangles, but that's just me. These are more fun to me. I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. Like what if you can't graph it or break it into a shape? I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. All of these you'll be able to find a shape of. See if we can find a pattern here. Maybe I should have done negative to start with. Maybe I should have started with positive. We hadn't talked about negative area yet. Start it with positive and see what happens. Then we'll talk about what happens with the negative. So do 160. Yeah, if I'm just doing a horizontal line, because that's all a constant's ever going to be, right? Is a horizontal line. 
Do you agree? So that's always going to be my height, right? If I'm graphing, I'm always going to get, no, no matter where I am, I'm going to be in the shape of a rectangle, right? And the height of that rectangle is always going to be whatever this line is. So really, all I'm doing when it's a constant, so I've got this height, is I just need to know the width of my rectangle, right? I need to know how far it spans from here to here. Well, that's given to me in D. Do you agree? So the area of this rectangle is going to be 160, because that's the height, times upper bound minus lower bound. And in fact, that is a formula If you find the integral of a constant from A to B, we just take that constant and multiply by B minus A. Because we find the width of that, the span of that rectangle. That's all we're doing, and that's why. No matter what the constant is, I think 18, 18 looks like this. From negative 4 to negative 1 of pi over 2, B theta. Still a constant, right? So I still do the same thing. I still do pi over 2 times negative 4 minus negative 1. Same concept every time. So look out for those constants. They make it easy to evaluate. You got to do... Did I do it backwards? I did it backwards, didn't I? Sorry. Yes, it matters. It's upper bound minus lower bound. Um, try this one and I'll stop. This will be the last one, I promise. This one's hard. Evaluate. No, those are, that's all, it's just, those are just, um, write the equation, like, you know what I'm talking about? Did I get it yet? Nobody? <laughs> What does x look like? y equals x. So it's a line. That's right. Through the origin, slope of 1, I'm going to graph that. There's my function. And it wants the area from a to a over 3. And I don't know what a is, and I don't know what, or not a over 3, but and I don't know what a root 3 is. And I'm going to stay positive just to make it easier for me to see here. I'm going to stay on this side, and I'm going to go, I'm going to say, let's just let this be A. And then let's let this be A root 3. So if this is A, now look at my equation. My equation is Y equals X, right? 
So this point is AA, and this point is A root 3, A root 3. Agree or disagree? You see why? The equation is y equals x, so x and y always have the same coordinates. So the shape I'm looking for is a what? It's a trapezoid again. How do I find the area of a trapezoid? One half. Y'all can do this. I'm tight. I just got some variables. You you look pained. <laughs> Alex, are you okay? This one's hard. This one's hard. This one's very conceptual. All right. So now if I think about, I'll let this be base one. I'll let this be base two. And this will be my height, what it spans across. <coughs> So let's think about what we know. I know base 1, what's that length? A. This is exactly right. Base 1 is A. That's A. What's base 2? A root 3. What about the height? A root 3 minus A. Well, let's just plug in that area formula and see what happens. One half base one plus base two times the height a root three minus a. Okay. <laughs> oh. Let's see if it simplifies down. A squared root 3 minus A squared plus A squared times 3. Should put 3A squared minus A squared root 3. Right? One half. I've got three a squared minus a squared. What's that give you? <laughs> Where did I get what? Did you? <laughs> I believed you again. You what? Oh no. Does this make sense with the integrals though? Do you see what we're doing? Some of those are, you're going to hit a couple of those that are kind of hard. You've got 31, 33, and 35 are like that with the variables where you have to plug in. Yeah. Not always, unfortunately. Sometimes it won't. Like tonight or in general in the future? In general, very complicated. Um, are you saying like how do you know you need to multiply it out or how do you know? Is that what you're asking me? Or are you just asking me what you... Right. So we're going to get very, very soon, like, we're going to get to it tomorrow. We're, we're not using area anymore. I'm going to show you. Remember how whenever we are doing derivatives and then we did the shortcut derivative? I'm going to show you the shortcut interval soon. We won't always be using area to find the area under the curve. You see what I'm saying? 